Okay, so welcome back. This is going to be our final screencast for Chapter 11, Genetics. Um, we do have a fourth section, Section 11.4, which actually deals with meiosis, but that particular um, section is not going to be included on your very first summative assessment for this chapter. So we still have a little bit of Chapter 11 to go, but this is going to be the final screencast on our genetics piece of this particular chapter. And in this particular section, we are going to look at other patterns of inheritance. So what we mean here is not the typical dominant versus recessive um, inheritance patterns that we've looked at in 11.1 and 11.2. So if you notice, it says exceptions to Mendel's principles. And so what we're going to do again in 11.3 is we're going to look at something that is a little bit different from what we are used to. Um, we're going to actually explore what we call incomplete dominance, codominance, and we're also going to look at a situation where you actually have multiple alleles for a single gene. Now the first one we're going to look at is called incomplete dominance. And like the name itself um, states, what we mean here is that we have some alleles that are neither dominant nor recessive. In other words, you don't have a situation where you actually have one allele that's going to overpower another. So in a typical dominant versus recessive situation, if you notice over here on the right, we have a pink flower or actually a red flower and we have a white flower. And in a typical dominant versus recessive, we would imagine that possibly the red flower might dominate or overpower this lighter white flower. But in this case, we actually have a heterozygous phenotype that lies somewhere between the two homozygous phenotypes. Now what that means is this. Um, this would be considered the homozygous dominant phenotype, and this is going to be considered the homozygous recessive phenotype. But if you notice the results that we get from this, the heterozygous condition, which means we have one of each allele, actually produces a different type of phenotype. We actually have a pink color. We don't have a red, we don't have a white, we now have a pink. Now something else that's kind of um, interesting about this particular Punnett square is that we are used to the capital and the lowercase letters being used in our Punnett square. Well when you talk about incomplete dominance and when you talk about codominance, oftentimes we'll actually use different letters. And So if you notice for the red we're using the capital R and for the white we're using the capital W. Now when you do talk about the heterozygous of course we combine these two letters together so we have one R we have one W it means the same thing hetero of course means different um, but the big thing here for incomplete dominance is that we actually have an intermediate phenotype so we have a phenotype here that's different from the parents that we started off with. Now another exception to Mendel's principles is the idea of codominance. And so that prefix that you see right here, the prefix co, is really important because what we have is we actually have two alleles that are very clearly expressed in the organism. So if you notice up here we have an example of a chicken. And in this case we have a chicken that has both white and black feathers. Well both of those represent an allele. In other words we have an allele that actually codes for black feathers and we have an allele that codes for white feathers. And if you notice this chicken somewhat appears spotted which means that both alleles are very clearly expressed in that organism. So if you remember we had looked at incomplete dominance where we actually had an intermediate. In other words we had a color that was a little bit different from the two original parents. Well this is a little bit different because we actually have both parents or both characteristics being represented in one individual. So if you notice over here on the right hand side we have a pennant square set up to kind of illustrate this. Kind of like what we did with the flowers before. Um, in this case again we're using different letters. The B is going to represent the black feathers and the W is going to represent the white feathers. Now just like we had done before we do have a heterozygous condition. We have a capital B and a capital W. Now in this case the um, capital B if we had two big B's together that's going to give us a black feathered bird. If we had had two capital W's together, that's going to give us a white feathered bird. 
but in this case we have a bird that has a capital B, a capital W, so what we call this particular um, phenotype is sort of a spotted type of phenotype, because again, if you notice over here on the left, we have a bird that actually has both black feathers and white feathers. And so what we're doing is we're actually crossing two spotted chickens in this Punnett square. Now when we do that, it's a typical Punnett square where we bring these two together, so we have one situation where we have two capital B's, we have one situation here that we have a capital B, a capital W, another situation where we have a capital B and a capital W, then of course we bring these two capital W's together, and we have a situation where we have this particular type uh, of genotype. Now what are we looking at here? So we're looking at one individual that's going to be black out of the four. We have two individuals that would be spotted out of the four, and we have one individual that's going to be white out of the four. All right. So in other words, setting up your Punnett square is pretty much the same, but the way that you actually interpret those results is what you need to pay attention to. Now another exception and the final exception that we're going to discuss to Mendel's principles is the idea of actually having multiple alleles. Now what that means is you actually have a gene that might code for a particular characteristic, like for example over here on the right we have blood type, but actually the phenotype is going to exist in many different forms. In other words, we're going to have more than the typical two alleles that you would find for a gene. So if you notice here we have um, various different types of blood. We have an A type blood, we have a B type blood, um, we have an AB type blood, and then we have one that says no antigens, which is actually an O type blood. Now what we're looking at is we're looking at a situation where um, our red blood cells have these um, specific chemicals called antigens on our red blood cells. And they're a little bit different for different people because that's what gives us our blood type. So if you notice in this example, for a person with a blood type A, they have this particular type of antigen. For blood type B, we have these sort of um, dots or circles on the red blood cells. This would represent the B antigen. Um, if somebody has blood type AB, they actually have both the A and the B represented on the surface of their red blood cells. But if you notice, we have somebody with blood type O, they do not have any antigens, not A, not B. No antigens are found on the surface of that red blood cell. Now what does that mean? Well if you notice, as we had said with um, some situations for some genes, the one that actually codes for blood type, we have more than two alleles. And so in this case, you actually have an O, you have an A, and you actually have a B um, in terms of, of the alleles that would code for that blood type. Now if you notice over here on the right hand side, we have an example of the pennant squares you might see if you look at blood type. Um, if you notice, we have an individual right here that actually has a blood type AB and so that would be their genotype. This person right here actually has blood type A because um, in essence the A sort of overshadows the O and so we have a genotype of AO and when you cross these two, remember these represent the possible gametes, we do the same thing we had done before, we bring these two A's together, this person would have blood type A, we bring these two together, this person would have blood type AB, now this person would have blood type A this person would have blood type B. Now if you notice they did do ratios right down here towards the bottom. So we have a fourth with blood type AB, we have a fourth that have blood type B, but we actually have a half that have blood type A. Now the reason for that is this person would have blood type A and this person would have blood type A. So again, phenotypically they have the same blood type. Now down here towards the bottom, this is another example of multiple alleles in rabbits coat color is actually determined by multiple alleles. And in this case, the dark gray, the capital C, is going to overshadow the other three coat colors. And so if you see a capital C, that's the one that actually codes for dark gray fur. If it has a lower KC with a CH as a superscript, that's going to code for chinchilla. If you have a lower KC with a, a lower case H, that's going to code for Himalayan, and of course if you have two lowercase c's with no superscripts, then that's going to code for albino. Now in this case, of course, as we had said, in order to get a dark gray rabbit, you must have a capital C, because that capital C is going to overshadow everything else. To get a chinchilla, if you notice, we could have two lowercase c's with two ch's, and that gives us a chinchilla genotype. But if you notice, we can have chinchilla also where we could have a C with a CH, again that's that chinchilla allele, but it could be paired up with that C 
the lowercase h, which is Himalayan, but that chinchilla allele is going to overshadow the Himalayan, as well as overshadowing the albino allele as well. So if you notice for the alleles over here for the Himalayan, of course you will have a Himalayan coat color if you have a C with a lowercase h for both alleles, but that C with the lowercase h will actually overshadow the albino, so this would give you Himalayan as well. And the only way that you can actually get an albino phenotype is by having two lowercase c's. But again, this is multiple alleles because we have a capital C that codes for dark gray. We have a C with a lowercase ch as a superscript that codes for chinchilla. A C, lowercase h, codes for Himalayan. And of course, the C with no superscript is going to code for albino. So there's actually four different alleles for coat color um, in this particular situation. So the easiest way, of course, as we've done in the past, is to just do a little bit of practice to kind of sort of demonstrate how these um, alternate forms of inheritance can actually work. So what we have is we have a cross between a blue blah blah bird, capital B, and a white blah blah bird, which is going to be capital W, that's going to produce silver offspring, right? So this is going to be a situation where we have incomplete dominance because it's not white, it's not... Um, blue, it's actually an intermediate between the two. It's actually a new phenotype, a third phenotype, so it's going to be silver. So it says the color of blah blah birds is determined by just two alleles. What would be the genotypic and phenotypic ratios for a cross between two silver blah blah birds? And so again, the genotype here is going to be capital B, capital W. So that's going to be um, the possible alleles that we would find for one parent. And again, we're crossing two silver birds, so that would be the possible alleles for our second parent, and it's a typical Punnett square. I'm going to bring these two together, these two together, these two together, and these two together. And again, if you notice, there's no lowercase letters because we're working with a different form of inheritance here. Now, the genotypic ratio in this case is going to be, we're going to have one-fourth, that will be big B, big B. We're going to have actually one-half, it's going to be big B, big W, and one-fourth is going to be big W, big W. All right. Now, phenotypically, we're going to have one bird that's going to be blue. We're going to have two birds that are going to be silver. And again, these are just possibilities. We're going to have one bird that could possibly be white. All right. Now, if you notice, I use fractions here and I use numbers here. You could also use percentages, and that would be absolutely fine. So again, this is a situation of incomplete dominance. Now, the second practice is going to be one that shows us what would happen in terms of co-dominant situations. And so in cattle, these cattle can be red. So again, if you notice, there's two capital R's where all the hairs on that cattle are red. You could have a situation where all the hairs are white, and so that's going to be capital W, capital W. But then we have a third phenotype that's actually called roan. Now, a roan is actually where you have red and white hairs together, and so this is going to represent a roan color. So what would be the genotypic and phenotypic ratios of a cross between a roan bull and a red cow? So the roan is going to be a red and a white together. So again, a roan color is where you have a mixture of red and white individual hairs in that same animal. It's not an intermediate like we had looked at in the previous screen. And we're going to cross that roan bull with a red cow. And so we have two capital R's. Typical Punnett square. Bring these two together like that. And so this is what you end up with. Now, what you need to do is you need to interpret this. So we have a genotypic ratio. In this case, we have two that are RR, and we have two that are RW. So this could be a 50-50, a one-to-one, one-half, one-half. Any way that you want to express it is totally up to you. Now, for phenotypic ratio, we have two individuals that are going to be red, and we have two individuals that are going to be roan. Now, remember, a roan color, this is codominance, you have individual red and white hairs in that animal. It's not an intermediate like incomplete. This is an actual codominant situation. So this is what you would see um, in this alternate form of inheritance compared to what we had looked at before. Now this last practice problem is going to focus on the multiple allele situation that we had looked at before with the rabbits. And again, we said coat color in rabbits is going to be inherited by a series of multiple alleles. And so again, we said we had four. 
capital C, C with a CH, C with an H, then of course a C with no superscript. It says in the case of rabbits there are four alleles and each one is expressed with a different phenotype. Capital C is dark gray, C with a CH is chinchilla, C with a lowercase h is going to be Himalayan, and the C without any superscript is going to be white. So in this case, suppose you cross a chinchilla rabbit with this genotype, C with a lowercase ch and C with an h, with a dark gray rabbit with this genotype. And so we're going to put this up here in our Punnett square. So we have a C with a ch, that would be chinchilla. And again, remember, this chinchilla right here is going to overshadow or dominate this C with the lowercase h, this um, Himalayan um, allele. Then we have a situation where we have a dark gray rabbit with a capital C and a C with a little h. And again, remember that capital C basically dominates every other color variety. But it's just the same in terms of setting up your Punnett square and, of course, filling it in. So we have a capital C, we have a lowercase c with a ch, we have a capital C lowercase c with an h, so we're just bringing those together. We have a c with an h and a c with a ch, and then we have a c with an h and a c with an h. So we have our genotypic ratio as being 1, that is capital C, c with a ch. We have 1, it's going to be capital C with a c with an h. We have 1 that's going to be c, lowercase h, c with a ch. And then we also have, we put this over here on the right, one with a C H C H. So that's going to be our genotypic ratio. And again, I'm just using numbers in this case. You could do 25, 25, 25, 25 percent, and that would be fine. Now, phenotypically, you got to make sure you look at your chart so you know exactly what those combinations would give you. So if we have this situation right here, since we have a capital C, we know that this animal is going to be dark gray. All right, so we have one situation here that's dark gray, but if you notice over here on the right, we also have another situation, because we do have that capital C, where it's going to be dark gray. And remember, this capital C overshadows everything else that we see here. Now, this individual right here, we have a C with a lowercase h and a C with a ch. Remember, the C with the ch is going to be dominant to the Himalayan and the albino. So in this case, this animal is going to be chinchilla. And then we have over here on the right, we have two um, lowercase c's with a superscript h. Well, that's going to be a Himalayan color variety in these rabbits. All right. So phenotypically, we have two that are going to be dark gray. And we have one that's going to be chinchilla. And we have one that's going to be Himalayan. And so that's how you determine your genotypic and phenotypic ratios in a multiple allele cross. All right, so that's going to finish up our, um, again, final screencast for our first summative assessment for Chapter 11. As always, please make sure that you have completed your screencast notes before you come to class.